And there's a broad truth here that suffering is the result of sin, but personal suffering does not directly flow from personal sin. Here's what I mean. When God created the world, it was perfect. It was beautiful. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no heartache. And then man sinned. And that original sin in the garden caused what we refer to as the fall. And in the fall, we were broken. We became mortal. We became susceptible to disease. We became susceptible to disability. We became susceptible to loneliness and separation and all of this brokenness into the world. And so in a sense, if there'd never been sin, there would not be suffering. But the fact that sin brought suffering into the world does not mean that what you're suffering right now is a result of your personal sin. Because what Scripture teaches us is that personal suffering does not necessarily flow from personal sin. The book of Job is all about a man who was incredibly righteous, was a man of integrity, and he suffered greatly. In Galatians 3, 4, 4, 13, Paul tells us about a time when because of his illness, God used that to bring him to a place where he could preach the gospel to the people in Galatia. He was doing the right thing on mission for God and got sick. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, he talks about the fact that God allowed him to have a thorn in his flesh, this infirmity, this difficulty that he struggled with, and it wasn't because of his sin. And so what Scripture teaches us is that suffering is not the result of personal sin. So if you're struggling today or you're facing some adversity today, that does not mean that God is judging you. Now, there's definitely some suffering that it's the consequences of our choices. If you get up from church today, hop in your car, go down to the Hux at the corner, and you rob it, and the cops throw you in jail, you will suffer because of your choices. If you cut someone off, and they give you an obscene gesture, and then you pull over in front of them, and get out and challenge them, and they punch you in the face, it will hurt, and that will be the consequences of your poor choices. But if you go to the doctor and you find that you're sick, or you have someone betray you, that does not necessarily mean that you're experiencing that because you have sinned. Because you can be righteous, you can be innocent, you can have integrity, and still suffer adversity. Now, Jesus could have gone into a long lecture like I have tried to cover in a roundabout way here about original sin and suffering in the world. He could have talked about sin coming into the garden and now how there's just this general suffering and brokenness in the world. He could have talked about that, but what he says rather is he did not sin and his parents did not sin, but God is going to manifest or show his works through him. Jesus would use this moment to show his power and his grace. And so while present suffering does not flow directly from past sin, present suffering can be used for future grace and future glory. And so what you're facing right now, what you're suffering right now, what you're going through right now, it may or may not be the result of your sin in the past, but it can be used to show God's glory in the future, to show his purpose. And sometimes that looks like what it's going to look like for this man here as Jesus heals him of his blindness. And sometimes it looks like God's sustaining us through that difficulty because Paul would pray that God would remove this thorn in the flesh and God would say, my grace is sufficient for you. He wouldn't fix what is broken, but he'd give Paul grace in the midst of it. Every one of the apostles, the disciples, they would end up dying for their faith, not because they were unrighteous, but because they were righteous. And their suffering in those moments was not because of their previous sin, but God would use it for future glory. And so if you're facing adversity right now, know that God will bring about glory and grace in your life, and it may look like healing, and it may not. It may look like God fixing what's broken, or it may be God sustaining you through that brokenness. 